वतन मेरे वतन वतन नाबाद रहे तू आबाद रहे तू Good morning to one and all present here. Constitution of India was adopted on 26 November 19, 1949 and came into effect on 26 January 1950. It replaced the Government of India Act of 1935, thereby declaring the country as a sovereign, democratic and republic. Today we are celebrating the 75th Republic Day. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our honorable founder and chancellor Dr G Viswanathan esteemed chief guest Dr C Sailendra Babu IPS former director general of police Tamil Nadu vice presidents Mr Shankar Viswanathan and Dr G V Selvam assistant vice president Ms Kadambri S Viswanathan vice chancellor Dr Kanchana Baskaran pro vice chancellor Dr Parthi Parthasarathy Malik registrar Dr T Jayabharathy faculty and staff members my dear students and representatives from press and the media i request our honorable founder and chancellor to hoist the national flag
Flag salute. commanded by under officer Yogeshwaran.
chief guest of today, the 75th birthday celebrations at VIT, Dr. Saivendra Babu, IPS, former Director General of Police, Tamil Nadu, respected Vice Presidents, Assistant Vice President, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Professors, Distinguished Guests, and my dear students, very good morning to you. I am happy that our chief guest, Dr. Sailendra Babu, is here with us. He has a long career as an IPS officer and he is also an author, a speaker and many things. I am happy that he is going to be This is a very important day for us. As it was pointed out, we enacted this constitution in November 1949 and came to be implemented on 26 January 1950. In fact, the preamble of the constitution was amended. Our uh, two words were brought in when I was in Lok Sabha in 1976. Sovereign Democratic Republic became Sovereign Democratic secular and socialist republic. I always think about this. When this was introduced, there was not so much inequality in our country. Now it is increasing. I am happy that the total GDP of the country is growing. Now we have become the fifth largest economy of the world. But when we take into consideration the per capita income, our ranking is 139. Apart from this, due to various reasons, the inequality is increasing in our society and the country. This is concerning for all of us, mainly because higher education has not reached the poor class and the middle class. Now it is restricted mostly to the upper class and to some extent upper middle class. In 2011, according to 2011 estimate, those who are eligible for higher education in our country is 14 crores of children, that is between the age of 18 to 23. Out of these 14 crores, now it must have gone up in the last 11-12 uh, years. Only 4 crores are in higher education throughout the country in our colleges and universities. Unless all of them have an equal opportunity, it will be difficult to reduce the inequality in the society apart from other steps taken by the government. In fact, I wonder I don't know how many of you read these things. Now they say a capitalist country like US is lagging behind us in inequality. In our country, the top 1% of the population, they own 58% wealth of the country and the US, they own 37%. We have overtaken them. It is unfortunate that the taxes paid in our country is more by the lesser half of the population than the top people. The top 10% of the country owns 80% of the wealth of the country, but they pay only 4% of the GST taxes. The bottom 50% who own 6% of the property of the country, they pay 64% of the taxes. That is the situation. I think as going to, you are going to be the future leaders, future generation, you are going to rule the world, rule the country. I want you to know about it and let us take some steps. Of course, the government should take the initiative, but our initiative is that we should see that everybody gets higher education. In fact, at this time, I would like to thank our teachers and non-teaching staff and students who have contributed every year. They contribute one day salary, the teachers and non-teaching staff. I congratulate them, which goes to the education of poor students in the combined Vellu district. This year, their contribution was 1 crore and 35 lakhs. It's not a small amount. 
I congratulate, thank all of them, and I want all of you, wherever possible, to help education. In fact, it is Bharatiya, the famous poet who said, instead of building thousand chow trees or thousands of temples, it is better to give education to one poor child. That's what Bharatiya said. I want you to bear this in mind so that this country grows and the uh, the uh, the benefit of growth should reach everybody. That's the me uh, message I wanted to give you today. I'm happy that uh, Dr. Sailendra Babu is here with uh, various experiences, varied experiences, and uh, I would like to thank him for accepting our invitation to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your strong message. Yes, we are a secular nation. Our chief guest for this auspicious occasion. Dr. C. Sailendra Babu, IPS, Super Animated Director General of Police, Tamil Nadu, is an elegant, profound, upright bureaucrat with multi talents. From a small agriculture family in Kuriture to the city's Director General of Police, he surely has an inspiring journey. Being an author, reader, motivational speaker, blogger, a guide for many UPSC aspirants. He did schooling in Government Higher Secondary School, Kuriturai, at Kanyakumari Districts, pursued B.Sc. in Agriculture College and Research Institute, Madurai, obtained his Bachelor of General Law and Masters of Arts from Annamalai University, Kadlur. He holds an MBA degree in Human Resource Specialization. He was awarded a PhD for his thesis on missing children by the University of Madras. He is a 1987 batch IPS officer belonging to Tamil Nadu cadre. He has served the public in various capacities as Assistant Superintendent of Police in Dharmaburi, Gobichetti, Paliam, Salem and Dindakal, as a Superintendent of Police in Chengalpad, Sivagangai, Kadlur and Kanjipuram, as Deputy Commissioner and Joint Commissioner of Police in Chennai, as Chief Vigilance Officer in Karur, as Commissioner of Police Coimbatore, as Deputy Inspector General of Police Vilupuram and Trichrapalli, as Inspector General for Northern Zone Chennai in 20. Well, he was promoted to the rank of Additional Director General of Police of Prisons Tamil Nadu, then as ADGB of Coastal Police and Railway Police. In March 2019, he was promoted as Director General of Police of Railway Police. In 2021, he took charge as DGP of Tamil Nadu Police the head of Tamil Nadu Police. During his tenure as Commissioner of Coimbatore City, he introduced computer literacy program in various schools in association with Lead India 2020. He is a proud recipient of several state and national awards. He has actively participated in and supported various sports activities such as swimming, athletic shooting and cycling. He has organized free karate camps for children from poor economic section. He has also initiated karate camps for in various women's colleges. He has also written various books related to physical fitness and motivation such as in 20, uh, 2008, he has published a bilingual book named Ningalum IPS Adhigari Agalam in Tamil and you too can become an IPS officer in English. In 2009, named Boys and Girls Be Ambitious and Principles of Success an Interview. Various books were authored by him, namely A Guide to Health and Happiness, Sadika Asipadu, Udalene Urdi Sai, America Vil Irathi Nalu Natkal, Ungal Kana Irathi Nalu Poor Vidigal, Unakul or Talevan and Sindhita Velegil in subsequent years. A fitness perfectionist and a cycling enthusiast, the 1987 batch IPS officer served 36 years entirely in Tamil Nadu. We are honored to have you with us, sir, today. We have our commando and captain saluting and greeting our chief guest with a bouquet. With undue respect, without further delay, I invite you to inspire us with your chief guest address. Respected Dr. G. Viswanathan, Founder and Chancellor, Respected Vice President, Respected Vice Chancellor, Respected Pro Chancellor, Members of the Faculty, Distinguished Guests, NCC Cadets, Students, Ladies and Gentlemen, Wish you all a happy Republic Day. On this 75th Republic Day, I have a special message for you, the students of the VIT. Try to do the best you can and leave the rest to the future. 
probably one day you may be the best in the world b i w i like to thank the founder and the chancellor for this special opportunity and the students of vit i have a question to ask being a student of science you should be very curious curiosity is a hallmark of science you must be really wondering how it is possible for a large country like india to be colonized by a very small country like the uk a very few men sailed all the way from england on wooden boats wooden boats four and a half months long journey to madras the president chennai out of the 100 people only 25 people went back alive back to england it is these men not even a government they are only a company british east india company were able to bring the whole country under their rule how they are able to do it it is all a question of leadership robert clive they say robert clive is a man who is brilliant under the stimulus of danger cool under crisis foreseeing as a strategist on this republic day i will call upon every student of the vit to be brilliant under the stimulus of danger not during the normal times you should be cool under crisis like the police officers like me in a chaotic situations you must rise above the chaos at the battlefield and you should foresee as a strategist life is full of battlefield you know it you should be a strategic warrior to be successful engineer a successful leader a successful entrepreneur Stephen Hawking said don't look at your shoes look at the stars try to make sense of what you are seeing and try to be curious my dear young men i'm asking you this question when in 1910 1911 england was ruling almost all over the world they were ruling a country 100 times larger than them the great britain was ruling a people 99 99 times larger than them at this point in time how is it possible for a few people in india people like you and me educated people a few men and women were able to challenge the great authority of the largest country in the world the united kingdom mahatma gandhi jawaharlal nehru sardar patel lala lajpat rai bala gangadhar tilak subhash chandra bose they challenged the mighty country and mahatma gandhi he did not have an army he did not have an ak47 he didn't have a gun but he challenged the might of the british how is it possible truth non violence great principle mahatma gandhi has fought for the freedom till he died all along he was a fighter even after independence he has been touring all over the country to bring in peace he was the ambassador of the peace in india it was this gentleman till the last breath he fought for the country's freedom and later for the country's peace and security mahatma gandhi is supposed to be the role model for liberation movement all over the world including the united states of america for the liberation of the african african americans he was the role model for martin luther king junior he was the role model for the south african freedom struggle Nelson Mandela has said Mahatma Gandhi is my role model. It is at the junction ladies and gentlemen history has completely changed when the british was ruling india today on the 75th of the republic day a man of indian origin is the prime minister of the united kingdom rishi sunak i am very sure every one of you after graduation from this college become great leaders and give leadership to the people of the world not necessarily to the people of india wish you all the best and thank you very much for this grand opportunity thank you sir for your highly motivating words and i'm very sure that our students will definitely conquer the world honesty and hard work being our institute's policy it is time to award our students and friends for their honesty i request our chancellor and the chief guest to honor their good deeds with a certificate kumar reddy associate professor he earned a gold chain
Yarini, student. She has written a wallet containing important documents. Mr. Prakash Ji, head security guard. He has written a gold chain. Mr. Manohar and KR security guard for returning the Dell laptop and charger and other accessories. Mr. Sudhakar Ji, security guard for returning a gold bracelet. Mrs. Namanidam, women security guard for returning the laptop with charger. Mr. Syed Altaf, security guard for returning the gold chain. Mr. Kumar N, security guard for taking care of students staying outside the campus for returning various lost things. Mr. Narsimalu, security guard for returning various lost things by the students staying outside the campus. Ms. Divya, supervisor for returning the gold chain. Mr. Arul Das, block supervisor for returning the wristwatch. Mr. S. Jagdishwaran, block supervisor for returning a wristwatch. Mr. Deepan Arasan, block supervisor for returning the laptop. Mr. Murli Daran, block supervisor for returning the Apple earbuds. Mr. Ashraf Basha, mobile shop owner for returning a valuable information. We are able to take timely action. Mr. Ravi Chandran from TT Xerox shop for returning a wallet containing cash and other important documents. Mr. De Tyagarajan, gardener for returning wallet containing cash and important documents. Mr. Vignesh, auto driver for returning bag containing various electronics. And Mr. M. Raghavan, auto driver for returning a laptop and the accessories. Thank you, dignitaries. It is time to witness the drone show by our students. Don't fly too high 
it tight Love the world but keep the sky on your mind of the Republic Day brings with it glimmer of hope and pride with what we have achieved over the years. All these ceremonies and parades upholds the culture and heritage of our nation. It makes us proud to say that I am an Indian citizen. Let us join hands to make our India the super developed nation by 2047. With this we conclude this ceremony. Thanks for being a wonderful audience. Wish you all a very happy Republic Day.